Hi, yeah, this is Billy Joe Allen, and today I'd like to talk about logical fallacies. Now, a logical fallacy is an error in reasoning. It's uh, particularly easy to make, especially when people are trying to get us to make them. Um, among these logical fallacies are what we call ad hominem, slippery slope, red herring, and one of my favorites, special pleading. I like to focus on special pleading because it's one that is particularly um, uh, often used by status. And uh, an example, one of my favorite examples of this is President Nixon. Um, Nixon uh, famously said that uh, a crime is not a crime if the president does it. Uh, in that case, it would be executive privilege. Now, renaming something to someone else, to something else, doesn't change the essential nature of the act. Another example would be taxes. Now, taxes is the forcible extraction of money or wealth from somebody from a government, right? In other cases, we would call this theft. But the government says, well, if we call it taxes, then it's not really theft. Whereas, <clears throat> I would say, taxes certain is merely a type of theft. It's a theft by a government. Uh, it doesn't change the essential nature of the act just because government does it. Uh, other examples um, would be... Um, uh, a shakedown by the police when they write you up for a speeding ticket. Uh, a speeding ticket is uh, not really a crime because in order to have a crime in uh, jurisprudence, you, you need to have a victim. And because there's no victim of speeding in and of itself, there might be uh, a victim of a, a car wreck, but that's completely different. If there's no victim, then there's no crime. And... So when a cop uh, writes you up for a victimless crime, other examples of victimless crime would be, say, prostitution or gambling or taking drugs, uh, consensual adult behavior, uh, even if that behavior is frowned upon by society, or even, quite frankly, if it's just stupid, foolish. But um, anyway, behavior that doesn't violate the rights of someone else, um, that's... Uh, not really a crime. But the state can call it a crime, and then, in that case, they can shake you down for money, or they can put you in jail, right? And, uh, so, but if anyone else did that, uh, that would be assault. That would be initiation of force or threat of force in order to compel a certain type of behavior, right? And when we do that, that's assault. But when somebody wearing a uniform or someone carrying a badge makes us do it, well, that's just uh, law enforcement. Okay, these are all examples of special pleading, right? In which something that we normally take to mean something is supposed to mean something else when it is done by a particular person or group or entity. So now I'd like to come to one of my personal favorite status logical fallacies. Um, uh, specifically um, the uh, crap. So last but not least, I would like to come to my favorite uh, example of status special pleading. Now this one is a one-two punch. It's a double whammy. And it goes like this. Well, initiating force is wrong for people, but it's okay for for government, right? It's okay to aggress against someone. It's okay to use violence to get what you want if you're an official of the government and if you're acting in an official capacity as a representative of the government, right? Well, here's the second part of this. Um, it's, it's okay to do that as long as you're initiating force on your own citizens. If you are initiating force or threatening force against another government, well, that's bad, right? Unless that 
the government that is initiating the force or threatening the force is the United States of America. And the force is being threatened or initiated against any other country, right? Because that's not called an act of war, say the status. That's called American exceptionalism. Good examples of this recently are uh, torture. Torture is bad unless you're an American and then Abu Ghraib or Guantanamo Bay or if it's really to uh, avert some kind of uh, uh, terrorist attack, it's okay to violate those individual rights of people, not give them due process of law. You can torture them, right? But only if you're an American government. If you're someone uh, like, say, a tin pot dictator of some third world country, well, then uh, we in the United States um, not only do not condone that, but we can actually prosecute it on our laws, uh, even though it's uh, really difficult to uh, try to make a case that that's within our jurisdiction. But yes, that is something we can do and that we actually do. So that's my favorite double whammy, special pleading, logical fallacy.